We now want to look at minimizing uh, an implementation or synthesized logic circuit, and we're going to do that by using the Carnot map. So circuit minimization will be described by way of an example, and the example we're going to use is a vote taker. So the function f should return true whenever a majority of the three inputs a, b, and c are true, so two or more. Here are the steps. We're going to construct a truth table. We're going to write canonical expressions, SOP and POS. We're going to minimize the function using a Carnot map and then use the Morgan's theorem to manipulate the function until we have the desired logic gate constructs. In other words, NAND or NOR gates, etc. Finally, we'll implement the function with the logic gates. So let's write the truth table. We see that we have four entries when uh, any two inputs are true and when all three are true. So let's look at the sum of product terms. Remember when you do sum of products, you are summing min terms. And so we have uh, the min terms are going to represent the ones in the truth table. We have four ones. Uh, they are at, um, let's turn on my pen here. They are at M3, M5, M6. These are little m's and M7. All right, so this is M3, M5, M6, and M7. Now let's consider the last two terms. We see that they have A and B in common, so we can factor that out, and we're left with C bar plus C, which, because C bar plus C is 1, our function f can be reduced from uh, the original sum of four terms. Now, can this be spotted on the truth table? Well, this, these last two terms are these guys right here. And you notice that uh, between the two terms, only the, the um, c entry or input is changing. The other two, a and b, are staying the same. And yet, for those two cases, those two entries, M6 and M7, F is true. So we can see it from the truth table there that um, for those last two entries, when A and B are true, the output is true regardless of C. Therefore, it does not depend on C when A and B are true. So we have spotted it. But we want to formalize this technique. So let's take one more step forward before we go to the Carnot map. And let's... Uh, reorder the truth table according to gray code. Now remember gray code is just simply reordering the entries, your, the permutations of A, B, and C state so that between any two adjacent entries only one of the inputs A, B, or C is changing states either from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So notice here we have a change, here we have a change, here we have a change, oops yeah, and here we have, sorry, I missed that one. There's a change, here's the change, and here, and here. Okay, so only one change from uh, between any two entries. Okay, so now let's look for adjacent entries that have outputs that are true. We spot, and then we're going to pair them up. Notice that we have this pair here, so this is M6 and M7, and then we have another, <clears throat> excuse me, pair M7 and M5. So um, from the table, we anticipate the first one has basically C is changing. So this one is independent, not dependent on C. And the second one we notice is B that's changing, so not dependent on C. Now we can do this uh, algebraically, starting with our sum of five min terms. And we will collect, or we will group. Um, two pair of min terms and then we will factor out 
the common AC for that term, that pair of terms, and we'll factor out AB for the other set of terms. And again, we can eliminate the B bar plus B and the C bar plus C. So arranging, we found that rearranging the truth table according to gray code has been beneficial. But can we be sure that we fully minimize this function? The table shows two adjacent words for each three-bit word. For example, adjacent to 111 is 110 and 101. But given a three-bit word, there are in fact three adjacent words. So one zero or zero one one here is also adjacent to one 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 in that it differs only by one bit the state of bit a right here a so uh, on the in the truth table rearranged by gray code we're not able to position um, all three neighboring words around any given word and so it's hard to spot uh, if any uh, if if any neighboring words along with the, the center word uh, have the same true output so the gray code the uh, truth table even reordered in gray code cannot do this so this leads us to using what is known as the Carnot map so here's the Carnot map and um, first thing to notice is that this is for three this is a three three input Carnot map okay and if there's three inputs then there's two to the third or eight uh, input words right and you see that this table has eight squares eight cells and they are ordered they're laid out in such a fashion as if you move so that if you move from from any particular cell to its neighboring cell. So a neighboring cell to this M2 would be, you could go over to M0, you could go over to M6, you could go over to M3, and if you went this way, it basically wraps around and you go back to M3. M2, remember in our table, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, etc. So this is an M0, the min term, M0, M1, M2, M3. So if the entry in the function at M0 is 1, then we would actually put a 1 over here. Let's go a little further. Now, um, we sometimes you'll see truth tables that show the labels A, B, and C uh, above the columns and the rows as you see here and these indicate when those inputs are true so in other words this side here is when A is true and this side here is when A is false this is when C is true this row is when C is false and then B is, this is B true, this is B false, and this is B false. There's another way to show the Carnot map, which um, I think I like uh, better. And here you just see the inputs A, B, and C labeled in the corner. And then you have their values going across the top here and they are laid out in gray code. So notice you go from 00, 0 to 0, 01 and then you go 10 not uh, I'm sorry, you go 11 not 10 and then back down to 10 lastly. So in other words, it's gray code going across uh, the top. Now um, yeah, so here we're going to actually uh, work through this for our particular example. So what I've done is if I click back for a moment here we go. Uh, the truth table for this vote taker, majority vote taker, has four um, true entries. That's going to be M3, M6, M7, and M5. So three, five, six, seven. 
So let's remember that and go to our Carnot map. So we're going to put ones in the three, the five, the six, and the seven cells, and we'll put zeros in for the rest. So this is really just, it's just a truth table, but it's laid out in 2D rather than in 1D like the, the, the conventional truth table is laid out. And then the other caveat is that the ordering of the cells are such that all adjacent cells are neighbors, meaning only one of the inputs of A, B, or C will change their states as you move to an adjacent cell. So the steps to minimize the function are as follows. Uh, observing the map, let us circle any adjacent pair of min terms whose min terms are both true. If there are any sets of four adjacent min terms, either a two by two or a one by four, then we can circle those as well for an even greater minimization. So we're gonna look for initially pairs of ones that we can circle. And here is uh, our first pair. So the M3, M7, and we put a box around those. We can also do M7 and M5. And lastly, we can do M7 and M6. For each group of min terms, a pair or a group of four, write a new minimized min term. This is accomplished with the aid of the A, B, and C labels surrounding the K map. For example, the M6, M7 pair right here occurs for B true and A true, but C can be either true or false. Notice here C is false, here C is true in that row. And so therefore uh, the term, the min term that the minimized or reduced min term for this pair of min terms is just A and B. Any min terms not encompassed by any group are deemed unreducible and will remain a three term min term in the final Boolean expression. So had we had a one over here, for instance, then we would have the term A naught, B naught, C naught added to our expression and that would be irreducible because there are no neighbors that are true. Okay, so from the Carnot map, the sum of product canonical expression given here can be, re can be minimized to the form AB plus AC plus BC. Those three terms correspond to the three pairs uh, of cells that we were able to um, the three pairs of cells yeah, that we were able to um, circle in our Carnot map. Uh, if we were to implement this then, I guess I said that was the, the next step was we would we'd implement it. So let's go ahead and do that. We would ultimately have an OR gate that has three inputs. And then we have three AND gates. And we'll have A, B for the first. We'll have A, C for the second. And we'll have B, C for the third. Lastly, let's, uh, I just want to show you that the Carnot map can be extended beyond three. I've seen examples of Carnot maps for six inputs, though I've never worked any of them myself beyond a four input. So the four input's pretty uh, easy in that it just adds this lower half here. And we now are counting gray code on the, uh, in the rows, uh, just like we counted gray code across the columns previously.